What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update today, 2021, as well as the next upcoming two packages, the physical infrastructure package known as the American Jobs Plan and the next stimulus package known as the American Families Plan, of which there's about 15 or 20 different items, stimulus items, that are currently being negotiated to be included in this next stimulus package, uh, which could be combined with the infrastructure package and passed together as one. That's one of the two paths that the Democrats are currently considering. The Democrats are considering and are actually moving forward with the process behind the scenes with the reconciliation process to pass both of these packages combined together as one package. In fact, they've actually added $2 trillion on top of that. Those two packages originally started off together as one and were $4.1 trillion. They're now proposing Senator Bernie Sanders, who's the Senate Budget Chairman, and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer are proposing a $6 trillion uh, combined package, stimulus and physical infrastructure. They basically added an additional $2 trillion into that package. I do expect it will be negotiated down, even if they pass it just uh, through the reconciliation process, which means that uh, just the Democrats will pass it on their own through the reconciliation process. Um, but yeah, they have added an additional $2 trillion in that, which leaves lots and lots of money for a forced stimulus check or a monthly recurring stimulus check like we have so many different Democrats calling for. The two main proposals from the bill from the Senate, Senator Ed Markey and Elizabeth Warren, that also Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Senator Bernie Sanders both back is for $2,000 monthly stimulus checks that would go until the pandemic is declared over. Most people think that could be maybe the end of this year. So you're talking maybe five or six payments of $2,000 per month. The bill from the House of Representatives that is from Michigan Representative Rashida Tlaib, but more importantly, Democratic Representative Pramila Jayapal, who is the leader of the Democratic Progressive Caucus, which is about half of all the Democrats in the House of Representatives. She's the leader of that. They are both the co-sponsors for a $2,000 one-time stimulus check then followed by $1,000 monthly recurring payments that would go until one year after the pandemic is declared over. So a minimum of 12 payments of $1,000. And that is because the economic recovery is likely going to take years, just like it did back in 2008, 2009, when it took four to five years. Uh, and that was when we were dealing with a recession without a virus. Okay. So uh, best case scenario, we're probably looking at two to three years of a recession, which is why uh, we have so many Democrats calling for more than just a fourth stimulus check. I personally think worst case scenario, we will see a single stimulus check added into this next package. Best case scenario, we might see some type of monthly recurring payments um, that is separate from the child tax payments. If you think monthly payments can't happen, if you think it's a fairy tale, well, it's already kind of happening, and it was passed from the third stimulus check package called the Child Tax Credits, which the Democrats passed through the reconciliation process, and the IRS is going to start sending out monthly payments to children of $250 to $300 per month starting on July 15th. As you can see here, stimulus payments, IRS opens portal to register for $300 per month child tax credit payments. I will put the link to these two new IRS portals that are opened up, basically IRS websites, where you can go in and you can opt out of these monthly payments. I don't recommend you do that. Um, basically, you're going to get about half of that $3,000 to $3,600 paid in monthly payments, uh, $250 per month for children ages 6 to 17 and $300 per month for children under the age of six, starting on July 15th, okay? It, it goes to the person who claims the child on a tax return as a dependent. Um, and they're going to be six months of payments starting July 15th through December 15th. And the other half of the money, the first half of the money for the first half of this year, you're going to get as a one lump sum anyways on your tax return of $1,500 for children over six and $1,800 for each child under the age of six. So you're going to get a uh, lump sum anyways uh, come next year year. You don't get that till this year's tax return that you file next year. So almost like a year away, like maybe 10 months from now. So I do recommend you take the monthly payments. Again, each person's situation is different. So you might want to opt out of the monthly payments if you want, but that means you're not going to get monthly payments for the, the rest of this year. 
You don't have to pay taxes on this. This is a tax credit. Uh, the easiest way to think about this is a stimulus check is actually a tax credit. In fact, they are both, the child tax credits are advanced refundable tax credits. A stimulus check is actually the same thing. It's an advanced refundable tax credit. It's not taxable. You don't have to pay it back. Um, it's not income, nothing like that. Okay. The only negative scenario I could possibly think of is that maybe when tax time comes, if you're a person that typically owes money for taxes, or maybe you're right on the line, then if you get the monthly payments, maybe you could owe a little bit more taxes. But remember, you're still getting half of the money as a one lump sum this year. The Democrats want to extend this till 2025 and continue these monthly payments to go for four more years minimum. Um, then you wouldn't be getting uh, a one lump sum, but you would be getting checks every month for the whole year. Um, the other only negative scenario I can think of is if you make like hundreds and thousands of dollars and, and you make more than the income limit. Um, for the child tax credits, if that's the case, you're probably not watching this channel about stimulus, right? Um, but then you might want to opt out of the monthly payments because uh, if you make too much money, you'll have to actually, the, the IRS will claw it back. But that's only if you make like hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is the, over the third stimulus check limit. So uh, yeah. But most, most people, I would recommend take the money um, in the monthly payments because you're getting the money early. You're getting the money like now, starting July 15th, as opposed to waiting until next April to get your money. And you're going to get half of it in a one lump sum anyways. So again, monthly payments are already passed from the third stimulus check package for these increased child tax credits. Um, they increased them to, to former President Donald Trump used to have them at, uh, he raised it to 2000 They used to be 1000 uh, but there was no monthly checks. Now they've raised it to 3000 and 3600 uh, with the monthly check option. So it's 50 to like 75% more money. Um, and they might extend that in this next package. In addition to this, there's also three different proposals to raise the Social Security benefits and a massive proposal that is now backed by Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Senator Bernie Sanders and um, I think is a very high chance of likelihood to pass of new Medicare benefits included for no additional cost, hearing, dental, vision, and hearing aids. Over 75, about 75% 75 of hearing seniors do not have coverage for those things. If you do have coverage, you're actually paying an additional amount of money for them. And I've seen your guys' comments in the last video. A lot of people said they were paying an additional like 30 to $100 per month for hearing and dental and vision coverage. And a lot of people said that um, their coverage is pretty bad. It's pretty terrible um, for these supplemental coverages you pay for. Well, if they add in hearing, dental, vision, and hearing aids into the next package, this Medicare reform that they're calling for it, that honestly I think has a, a very, very high chance of passing. Uh, I don't think that this is one that's going to be cut out. Just my personal thoughts. I do think this is going to pass in this next package. Um, all those benefits will be included for free. So if you pay an additional... $80 a month for these additional benefits. First of all, 75% of seniors don't even have these benefits because they don't pay extra for them. They just get Medicare and they don't pay extra supplemental policies. Um, if you're paying $80 a month, you wouldn't have to pay that anymore. And that would be an additional $80 a month times 12 months, which is around $1,000 a year that you would basically get an additional $1,000 a year back in your pocket, you know, a check, not a check from the government, but it'd be money not going out to the government uh, because these additional benefits would be included for seniors on Medicare. So that would be amazing for the 75% of people that don't have these coverages. Um, we see Bernie Sanders talk about this all the time, as well as the people that have it but pay for it. You might get better coverage and not have to pay that money, which would mean an additional $80 a month or $50 a month or whatever you pay in your pocket because you wouldn't have to pay for those additional services. So that's kind of uh, where they're at right now. The Democrats are trying to uh, negotiate with the Republicans, but a lot of Democrats are saying we shouldn't even negotiate with the Republicans. We should pass this on our own through the good old reconciliation process and pass a much larger package around $6 trillion would be the starting point for negotiations, uh, but they would only have to negotiate between their own party, uh, just between the Democratic Party. Here is Senate Minority Whip, uh, Republican Senator John Thune, 
on the uh, negotiations and uh, passing this next package. Quickly, Senator, I want to ask you about infrastructure. Is it your sense that you're close to some kind of, of an agreement on that and, and how to pay for it? Well, I think we are close, and I think this is an issue on which there is room for bipartisan agreement. This is an issue that should be bipartisan. The, the complicated part is the pay for us. And, you know, and the details do matter. I think there's a structure out there that a number of Republicans and Democrats have endorsed. It, it, directionally, I think it's moving in the right direction. Uh, but, you know, filling in the details is going to be important to all this and being able to work with the White House. Ultimately, it's got to be something that the president would be willing to sign into law. But uh, I'm all for um, putting together a package that could attract a big vote in the Senate and in the House, get signed into law by the president. I think infrastructure is something the American people do expect us uh, to be working on and probably, frankly, would rather be we, were, we would working on that than an election bill that uh, puts Washington in charge of their elections in this country. Senator John Thune, thank you very much. Good to have you with us. Now, in addition to this, there's a couple um, stimulus provisions that are actually kind of ending here soon. As you can see here, Democrats are calling on President Biden to extend the pause of student loan payments. Democrats on Capitol Hill are urging President Joe Biden to extend the federal student loan payment moratorium by at least six months as the economy continues to rebound from the pandemic. In a letter to President Biden obtained by NBC News, a group of Democratic lawmakers asked him to take action before the September 30th deadline when student loan forbearance is set to expire, requesting he extend the pause for six months until March 31st, 2022, or until the economy bounces back to pre-pandemic employment levels, whichever period is longer. The effort is being led by Senate Senator Elizabeth Warren, as well as Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. By the way, President Biden has canceled nearly $3 billion of student loans already this year in uh, four many different rounds. This is not the major round that we're hoping that I do think will happen through presidential executive order of $10,000 to $50,000 per person. President Biden has said he's willing to do at least $10,000 of student loan forgiveness, although I think it's probably going to happen after they pass these next two packages because I think he's going to do it through executive order, which means he can just sign on the dotted line and pass it. Uh, minimum of $10,000 of student loan debt forgiveness for everybody that has student loans. Maybe they'll have an income threshold on it. So if you make a ton of money, you might not qualify for it, but that is yet to, to be determined. Um, but we have a lot of Democrats, including Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, uh, along with Democratic Representative AOC and Elizabeth Warren, that are pushing for $50,000 of student loan debt forgiveness, saying that uh, $10,000 doesn't even cover one year of college or maybe even a half a year of college. Uh, now with the price of college, depending on where you go. They are proposing two years of free college. Uh, preschool and two years of free community college in this next package, I think that has a very high likelihood of passing as well. So imagine being able to go to two years of free community college for free for probably anybody that makes uh, below the income threshold as the same as the third stimulus check package, which is about 85 to 88% of Americans, would be able to go to college for free, two years of free community college. They really want four years of college and they want to extend it to more than com uh, community colleges, but I think they're going to do it in stages. I think they're going to get, get it passed initially because it'll be a game changer, just even being able to go to college for two years for free would be a complete game changer than what it is now, right? Um, then I think they'll push for more years after that. And that's similar to what they did with the child tax credits. They just passed it for one year to start just to get their foot in the door and get them going. And now they're looking to extend it for four more years. So I think we're going to see student loan debt forgiveness. I think we're also going to see two years of free college, two years of free preschool. And once they do the mass round of student loan debt forgiveness, I personally think that we're going to see a large movement uh, for other types of debt forgiveness, like uh, the government can easily or the president can easily do if they can do student loan debt forgiveness through an executive order because the government owns 95% of student loan debt. So they just write it off. Basically, they just forgive it. They don't really need to print any money. Uh, they basically just, you know, take the IOU and rip it up.
uh, and you no longer IOU money to your student loans, a.k.a. the government. Well, the government can actually do the same thing with um, tax debt forgiveness. So uh, any type of taxes you owe is to the government, uh, as well as they also could do mortgage debt forgiveness because the majority of mortgages are actually owned on the back end by government agencies, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Those can probably be done through executive order as well. We also could see other types of debt forgiveness movement after they pass this student loan debt forgiveness because people are going to say, well, what about the other people that don't have student loans? Right now, about one in six adults has student loan debt. So what is that? I think that's about uh, maybe 90... I don't know, 80 million people, something like that, have student loan debt right now. A lot of we're gonna see a movement. We're already starting to see it now. What about people that don't have student loan debt? What about some other type of debt forgiveness for them? That's when this is gonna come into play. We could see medical debt forgiveness or credit card debt forgiveness. However, that would need to be done through an upcoming stimulus package because money would have to be printed for that to pay the um, you know, the the hospitals or to pay the credit card companies with other types of debt forgiveness. But I really do think we're gonna see a large movement for that after the student loan debt forgiveness gets passed. Also, just to note that any student loan debt forgiveness uh, that passes now or the rounds that have passed already, uh, the four rounds that are passed are for people that have had, um, they've been defrauded by their college, their college closed on them, or they have disabilities. Although that's already passed those four mini rounds. Uh, you do not have to pay any taxes on student loan debt forgiveness. Normally when um, debt forgiveness like this happens, you would it would count as income. So maybe if uh, you had ten thousand dollars of student loan debt forgiveness in the past, that would normally count as income uh, debt forgiveness like that. So you might have to pay a thousand or two thousand dollars of it in income tax, which is still better than paying ten thousand uh, dollars to pay one or two thousand. But they passed in the third stimulus check package a special provision that said for the next five years, any student loan debt that is forgiven because they kind of already knew that they were going to be doing this, right? Um, that it won't be taxable. So that's a very interesting thing to know. And that'll, again, save you an extra one or two or three thousand dollars. Also, some major news here. The U.S. is expected to extend the CDC residential eviction ban by one more month. The eviction ban is currently set to end at the end of this month, so about a week from now. And sources are saying that they're likely going to extend this for at least one more month. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, uh, eviction moratorium is set to expire June 30th. It's expected to be extended by another month. The sources briefed on the matter told Reuters. An announcement could come as early as today, the sources said. So I will keep you up to date on this. As soon as I hear new information, I will keep you up to date. There's currently over 10 million people that are behind on rent that the eviction moratorium is protecting. Now, it doesn't protect everybody. I've seen lots of uh, stories about certain cities or counties or states that um, have gone around that or ended it or um, certain judges that uh, you go to court and they evict you anyways. Um, but it has uh, protected a lot of people, I, I don't know, 80% or more. Of course, there's been a lot of people that have been evicted and got slipped through the crack or landlords found really um, creative ways to evict their tenants, um, which may or may not have been against the law. But um, it does hopefully look like they're going to extend this for at least one more month. I will keep you up to date on this. The good news is, is that all these different other type of stimulus provisions like the student loan debt payment pauses, student loan debt forgiveness, um, the eviction moratorium and um, rent assistance and mortgage assistance and property tax assistance, utility assistance that we talk about here on this channel or all these other kind of alternate type of um, stimulus provisions along with the states, cities and counties that are getting $350 billion right now as well that um, a lot of these states and cities are passing their own stimulus checks and their own stimulus programs uh, that could put thousands of dollars in your pocket. I'll link you to a video I just did on that here, going over all the different states and cities and county programs that I know about so far. Uh, but first, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new updates. I will keep you up to date on everything. Subscribing is completely free to do so. You can click the bell icon after subscribing to all notifications to get reminders when we go live, which is every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember those times uh, for remembering when to tune in. You can click this video here, which is an announcement about the child tax credit checks. If you have children, you need to watch that. 
This top video is about state, city, and county stimulus checks that are going out right now. And this bottom video is about the Social Security raises. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.